Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Zoo Exhibit Tours. Today we are once again back in Germany and we will be visiting the amazing Zoo Leipzig for the first time. And what better way to start than with arguably one of the greatest and most breathtaking zoo enclosures in the world. Welcome to Gondwanaland, one of the world's largest indoor rainforests. Today I'm going to take you on a journey through the different jungles of Gondwanaland where we will see many unique and amazing animals housed in some phenomenal enclosures. So without any further ado, let's begin the tour of Gondwanaland. This archway is the entrance to Gondwanaland. Gondwanaland is a fully indoors exhibit. The Gondwanaland building is a massive and modern looking glass dome which allows the exhibit to be lit up by natural light. In order to enter the Gondwanaland building, you follow a short path through the archway until you eventually arrive at the building's entrance doors. Immediately when entering the building, you are surrounded by darkness. This first part of Gondwanaland is called the Volcano Tunnel. The first hallway of the Volcano Tunnel consists of many small enclosures housing some unique species including eastern long-necked turtles and coastal horseshoe crabs. The enclosure at the end of this hallway is a nice mini rainforest and it is home to Montserrat orioles, cinnamon ground doves and the incredible looking black and rufous sengi which is also known as a black and rufous elephant shrew. The path takes you through a winding cave system where there are multiple enclosures dotted along the way. These enclosures are home to eastern quolls and there are also a few more enclosures that are home to kawaris. Eastern quoll coats can vary, with some being light grey with white spots and others being black with white spots, like this quoll here. After the quoll and kawari enclosures, the cave-like pathway eventually emerges from the darkness, and this is your view. We have now entered the main Gondwanaland building. Here, you are immediately surrounded by the sights and sounds of a tropical rainforest. After the plaza, the first part of the rainforest dome that you would come across is the entrance to the boat tour, but I will save this for the end of the video. Our journey through this tropical world begins with South America. As you follow the path, you can get many views of the beautiful scenery and should keep an eye out for squirrel monkeys and green iguanas roaming on the nearby islands. Also, have a look in a book that shows you all of the free roaming animals that you can spot around you. These animals include Madagascar giant day geckos, silvery marmosets and many tropical birds. After this book, the path brings you to one of the first exhibits in South America, which is home to black rumped agoutis. These agoutis had recently had some babies, which I had the privilege of seeing. After the agouti enclosure, the path takes you to the left and into another cave, where you arrive at the next exhibit in South America. This multi-leveled enclosure is home to the stunning ocelot. Unfortunately, I didn't see the ocelot, as she had recently given birth to a kitten and she was nursing it behind the scenes. This ocelot enclosure isn't massive, but it is still a decent size and it is still of good quality due to its nice and natural design. We will get a view of it from a few more angles later on in the video. The path then continues deeper into the cave and brings you to the next exhibit. This is a large tank for multiple large fish species. Just past this enclosure is an enclosure where you can look both above and underwater. And you are met with Gondwanaland's most noisy residence. Say hello to the giant river otters. Known as river wolves, these fascinating animals are the largest species of otter. They are carnivorous and are fearless, hunting animals such as caiman and anaconda in the wild. Zoo Leipzig was home to a group of five until... Three adorable pups were born. These babies were just two months old when I saw them and they were already really active and spent lots of time swimming and exploring their surroundings. This just shows how hardy giant otters are, as at just two months old, the pups are already able to swim and move around. This viewing area just shows you part of the otter's fantastic enclosure. 
This is their pool and it is huge and very natural. The otters are able to dive down deep and explore the bottom area of the pool. You may be wondering what this big log going over the otter pool is and we will find out later on in the video. Just round to the right of this viewing area is another viewing area. This viewing area actually shows you two enclosures. The enclosure at the front is for the red-bellied piranhas. The back wall of this enclosure is glass, which allows you to see into the giant otter enclosure behind it. This creates an awesome predator-prey setup. Further round to the right of this predator-prey setup viewing area is yet another above and underwater viewing area for the giant otters, where you can get more breathtaking views of them as they glide through the water. Opposite this viewing area, the path brings you to the cave opening and you are met with the next exhibit. This large and lush island habitat blends perfectly with the tropical surroundings and it is home to the two-toed sloth. This enclosure has many climbing opportunities thanks to the many huge trees and long branches in it. After the Sloth Island, the path takes you back to where we started, at the Agouti enclosure. This time, instead of heading towards the Ocelots and the cave entrance, we will head to the right of the Agoutis and follow the path uphill, where it eventually brings us to the next viewing area. We are now stood on that large log that we saw earlier over the Otter Pool. This log is actually a viewing area, which gives you an elevated view of the far side of the giant river otter enclosure. This view shows you the land portion of the enclosure, as well as part of the pool. The otters are able to swim directly below you. The land portion of the otter enclosure is huge and it looks like it goes on forever. The giant river otters share this paradise with another species, the white-faced saki monkey. These monkeys spend their time high up in the many trees in the enclosure and they have an offshore area in the rock wall that they can access via ropes. After taking in the views of the immense otter and monkey enclosure, the path takes you further uphill. Eventually, you come to a small set of steps to the left of the path that takes you down to a small glass viewing area. This viewing area looks from above into the ocelot enclosure that we saw earlier. After that, the path continues and the foliage opens out. You are given one of the many iconic and stunning views of the Gondwana Land exhibit. I should also add that there is never a dull moment in Gondwana Land. When walking between exhibits, you're always surrounded by beautiful tropical scenery. An archway welcomes you to the second zone of Gondwana land, Africa. The first exhibit of Africa can be found just through the archway. This exhibit, previously home to servals and then batted foxes, is now a mixed species exhibit for Madagascan species. Crowned lemurs and radiated tortoises call this enclosure their home. Just past the Madagascar themed enclosure is a viewing hut that gives you a look at another enclosure that is similar in design to the previous one we just saw. Owl-faced monkeys live with Kirk stick dicks in this enclosure. The viewing hut for this enclosure connects to another viewing hut that gives you a view of yet another mixed species exhibit. This exhibit is the largest in the Africa section of Gondwana land and it is home to a unique species mix. Two pygmy hippos and a group of Diana monkeys live together in this enclosure. The enclosure suits both species well in different ways. The monkeys have multiple climbing opportunities and the hippos have a large pool that we will see later on in the video. To the left side of the two viewing huts is an option to take a route into the centre of the Gondwana Land building. But this isn't any simple route. The steps up to this new route soon turn into a thin and long bridge that is suspended high up in the air. Walking across it gives you stunning views of the entire Gondwana Land building in all its glory. Two large trees are the centerpieces of the building, and they are where the multiple bridges connect to. Once you are done taking in the wonderful views, you can follow a second bridge back down towards the two viewing huts we were just at. When following the path, it eventually brings you into another cave-like area. Here you can get another look at the hippo and diana monkey enclosure. This is the large pool for the hippos to enjoy, and it comes with an underwater viewing area for guests, which is always cool to see. Multiple species of fish call this pool their home, 
Opposite this viewing area is the entrance to the next and final zone of Gondwana Land, Asia. You are welcomed by a waterfall that you can see close up through a gap in the cave. The first exhibit in the Asia section is for the striking Bornean rock frog. After them, the cave ends and you are back out into the tropical rainforest. You reach the next enclosure. This enclosure is home to the fishing cat, a unique cat that fishes for its prey, hence its name. Fishing cats are very adaptable animals, and their front toes are partially webbed to help them swim, which they do often. The fishing cat enclosure is a decent size and can be viewed from multiple angles. This is the main viewing area for the enclosure. As you can see, the enclosure has lots of foliage, rocks, and a large pool with an underwater viewing area. Further up the path is another viewing area for the enclosure, which is one of the most unique elements in the Gondwana Land exhibit. Believe it or not, this is a viewing area. You are able to go inside of this hollow log and view the fishing cat enclosure through a small glass window. As well as this, the fishing cat enclosure can also be viewed through a mesh fence. Before you get to the next enclosure, you get a sneak peek over the foliage of an enclosure for a certain long-nosed animal that we will see later on in the video. So past this and the fishing cat enclosure is a complex enclosure for two small and very cute residents. This is the Oriental Short Clawed Otter Enclosure. Home to I believe two otters, this enclosure is great for them. Just past these windows is a large window that looks into part of an enclosure for a large and rare reptile, the Sundagarial. We will see more of these crocodilians later on in the video. Across from the Sundagarial window are more viewing areas for the Oriental Short Clawed Otter Enclosure. Just past the otter enclosure is another mixed species exhibit. This aviary style exhibit is home to the wrinkled hornbill and the Asian giant tortoise. The enclosure has many perches for the hornbill as well as plenty of ground space for the tortoises. The enclosure is also fit with a large pool. Next up, after the hornbill and tortoises, is a section fit for reptile lovers. First up is another view of the Sundagarials. Their enclosure is wonderful. On my visit, I saw three Sundagarials in this enclosure, although there may have been more hiding away. Opposite to this viewing area are multiple glass windows that look into another large reptile enclosure. This one is home to the Komodo dragon. I saw two Komodos in this enclosure. The enclosure has two parts. The first side is more open and rocky, whereas the second one is larger and more dense with foliage. Both enclosures have pools. After the Komodo dragons, the path heads slightly downwards and brings you to an area with multiple large underwater viewing windows. The main inhabitant of both of these pools is the Sundagarial. The Garials share this enclosure with spotted pond turtles, Malaysian giant turtles, pig-nosed turtles, and lots of species of fish, including tinfoil barbs and barla sharks. As you can see, the gharials have a huge swimming space, and by adding other species into these pools, like the fish, it makes the environment even more realistic and natural. Now it's time to get a better look at that enclosure that we had a sneak peek of earlier. The path takes you to an area where the foliage ends, and gives you a wide view of Gondwana Land's Malayan Tapir enclosure. Filled with greenery, this enclosure has been designed really well. It is split into two sides, so I'm guessing that the zoo is home to at least two tapirs. The front enclosure is fit with a cave, a large pool, and lots of foliage, as well as logs. Natural rock barriers are used, which are covered with foliage, which helps to blend this enclosure in with its surrounding environment, giving it that natural feel. Malayan tapirs are fascinating animals, and they use their long prehensile noses as snorkels when swimming. Their noses are also great at picking up food and for sniffing. 
The Malayan Tape enclosure is the final main enclosure that makes up the Gondwanaland building. After seeing it, the path takes you on a short walk through the final part of the rainforest before you are back in the main plaza. From here you can exit the building. Just before your exit are multiple small enclosures for tiny reptiles including yellow-headed dwarf geckos and turquoise dwarf geckos. So now it is finally time to show you the Gondwanaland boat tour. Before we begin, please note that to go on the boat tour it will cost you a small fee. Once you're on the boat, you're first taken into a dark cave-like tunnel where you're shown some cool animated videos of a tropical rainforest as well as the devastating effects of habitat destruction. You also get a view into the Komodo dragon enclosure. After that, the cave ends and you are brought out into the light where you peacefully float down the tropical river. You are presented with beautiful views of the surrounding rainforest and you pass multiple enclosures including the ocelot enclosure and the Malayan tapir enclosure. And then you arrive back where you started, at the boat dock. So that is everything about the world class Gondwanaland exhibit at Zoo Leipzig. This is one of the greatest and most breathtaking exhibits that I have had the pleasure of witnessing and I hope that you all have enjoyed my tour of it. Thank you for watching.